Boom, boom, boom. All right, it has been, it's been like six months since I made a video. Well, not a video, but a vlog. I made some podcasts, but I just kind of like took a break. It was just, you know, sometimes I don't want to contribute to the chaos, but then I realized being on the sidelines of chaos and just seeing it makes me even crazier. Like there's no steam release. Social media obviously is just abysmal these days. I mean, it is, whew, it's incredible. I learned a lesson. Uh, I was in the airport the day after Trump got shot and I had to wait in this really long security line because for whatever reason, Charlotte doesn't have a premiere line. I don't have clear and all that other shit because usually with a premiere ticket, you don't have to fucking deal with it, but whatever, Charlotte's behind. So anyway, I've gone back to North Carolina like six times this year. But anyway, so many terrible hot takes the day after. It was like a real life version of being on Twitter. Oh, this is what it's like when you click the For You tab. You're just, you're basically hearing people's inner dialogue because everyone's inner dialogue is now out loud and people are just coming up with all these theories immediately. Even that night I went out for sushi and immediately people were coming up with theories. So you just realize how just ridiculous things have gotten. You know, the same people who made a girl popular for spitting on dicks also want to pretend they understand geopolitics. It's just, uh, it's quite a leap to make. So anyway, I removed most social media from my life phone first. I deleted all the apps off my phone and just checked them from the desktop, which works a little bit, but at the same time, it started to be with running the business, the shop, it started to become harder and harder because now I realize like, oh, if you don't put stuff out there, people will just forget that you exist. But the tattoo shop's been a lot slower than it was the past two years. I don't think it has anything to do with the social media aspect, really. It's just that the economy is fucking dog shit and people don't need tattoos. You know, tattoos are not something that people have to have. You do not wake up in the morning and be like, I have to have this tattoo. You do wake up in the morning hungry. So, you know, priorities for most people. Some people don't give a fuck, but you know, that's another conversation. I've, I've, I needed a break basically. So I've taken quite a break. I've gotten some clarity. I've cleared the cash, if you will. So that's been, that's been good. So I, I do plan on making more vlogs and more videos and more podcasts and kind of getting back in the swing of things. Quite the journey the past few months. Some, so many things have happened. I, I wouldn't even know where to start. One thing that happened that was really unfortunate is my mentor was really my first like really my first real tattoo boss, uh, was killed in a car accident unexpectedly. Right now, the Gastonia community is mourning the loss of a longtime tattoo artist. Randy Herring died over the weekend after a crash involving a Gaston County police officer, and his family says this is a tragic loss, and the tributes are pouring in. Many say that he paved the way for other artists. The crash happened just a few miles from Randy Herring's Shopskin Art, where he shared his passion for art, but also mentored many future tattoo artists. Loved ones I've spoken to say while he may be gone, his mark on the world was indelible. It's a huge industry, but a small family. And you have to show respect to those that built it and came before us. Like without Randy, there wouldn't be myself, there wouldn't be the shop, there wouldn't be other shops around. Saturday night, Gaston County police say an officer was responding to a shooting in Bessemer City with lights and sirens on when there was a collision with another vehicle. Brittany Thomas says her father was taken to the hospital where he died. Her family left with many questions. He was a man of few words, you know, and I've had connections and he spoke highly about me and those that we worked together, how proud he was of us. And that means more than anything. His life of art far more than just skin deep.
I just saw him. I was just out there and we were talking about making a documentary about him because I'd kind of gotten to this point where I just didn't know what to make about my own self because me and my wife, also a lot of people don't know, me and Alex got married like two years ago. But we were going through all kinds of shit uh, because of her her father who was killed and her mother who passed, everything that entailed that. So I didn't really have time to or desire to make vlogs like while we're going through this like extremely real life shit uh, where I needed to be here and grow as a human being. I had plans to move out of this house, but we cannot move out of this house right now uh, for many reasons, but majorly is that there's so much stuff in here that we have to still get through. Her parents built this house. It was a dirt mound when they found it. There's photos of Alex like sitting on a dirt mound and just a mailbox in the ground. They spent 40 years here. So there's 40 years of stuff to get through, and uh, it's just been quite an undertaking. We've got our work cut out for it. Well, mostly Alex. It's Alex's kind of thing. So she's going through it, and I'm just running my shop. The shop's been challenging. You know, it's like I've gone back and forth between thinking of what I even really want, because my life was so different a few years ago, and I never really expected to be a shop owner. It just kind of happened, because we moved here, and then I couldn't just sit here all day, and I found this building, which, which I discovered this week is like the deal of a lifetime, because I looked at other buildings thinking about moving it, I don't know why I do these things. There's no reason to move it. But I thought in my mind, like, oh, there'd be better foot traffic in this other area. But the rent is like two and a half times what I'm paying now. So I was like, well, that's, that's not happening. Alex has her horses. Alex has two horses. She has Milo and Apollo. So she does that. She goes does horse stuff every day. Just like really rediscovering a new life. Like you, in your lifetime, you will live at least, if you're lucky, you know, 10 lives. So we're in, I don't know which one we're in right now, but uh, it's a completely different life than it was uh, just even like two years ago. In other news, there's also the puppy, Kirby. We've got Kirby, and Kirby, I actually have to take him to the vet today. He's got to get an allergy shot, and Omar has to go get blood work done because he has to have a surgery inside of his mouth. Well, first he needs a dental, but he's got this like tiny little growth in his mouth that we need to get removed. We had quite the scare with him a few years back. If you remember, he had a splenectomy done, which was crazy, most expensive, stressful dog surgery that has ever taken place in my life, but he's doing great. I mean, Omar is fantastic. He's, he's turned into an old man, which is crazy to say, but he's, he's great. He doesn't really love Kirby so much. He, him and Kirby be beefing, but you know, Omar's just kind of showing him what life's all about. I've been super turned off and antisocial. I, I really feel like most people have lost their fucking minds. I've been through a lot of election cycles in my life and never have I seen people be so indoctrinated and supercharged and triggered and it's a wild thing to see but you know just like most things in life there's plenty of room in there to just make fun of everything because really most things deserve to be made fun of like people are painfully unserious they'll be they'll pretend to be serious right now because the virtue signaling is strong you know most people are just trying to get to brunch and you know the newest movie or sports event or what what have you concert they're, they're not really serious they just want to be left alone and they want their money to actually be worth something it is what it is i don't pretend to be a political pundit i do feel like that would be the easiest lane to get attention on the internet but we're going to do our best to avoid it most of the time some things are unavoidable you know like when biden was like just falling apart at the seams it's pretty unavoidable to not say something about like dude y'all are carting around a fucking literal corpse right now trying to have him you know run the country well he is running the country well someone's running who knows who's running the country but regardless other major changes are i quit smoking weed this is all on the podcast but i quit smoking weed and i stopped drinking caffeine four months ago uh it's been quite the eye opener you know when i started smoking weed i just needed these blinders i guess to, like focus on nothing but what I needed to focus on. Over the years, I just didn't realize how bad I was getting. You know, I was taking like north of like 20 some dabs a day. At one point I was eating like 500 milligram edibles often, just doing way too much. I finally went to the doctor and they're like, yo, your blood pressure's high. Blood, high blood pressure runs in my family. And it's not that blood pressure has anything to do with weed, but I just kind of like needed an excuse. So I stopped and I stopped caffeine. And uh, now looking back, I'm just like, well, I don't even, I don't even desire the shit. You know, I don't ever, I'm never really sitting around like, damn, I wish I could smoke some weed right now. It just doesn't happen. And same, same thing with caffeine. I now sleep amazingly, have the craziest kind of awesome dreams every night. 
I usually get three of them. I'm never really tired during the day. Like I don't need that normal like pick me up that most people need. And I don't wake up being like, oh, I just need something to get me going, which, you know, when you come out of it, it kind of sounds like a bunch of crackheads when people are like, don't talk to me until I get my cough. Kind of crackhead behavior, but that's all right. It's part of our culture. I'm not going to make fun of people who do what I used to do. I just personally don't need it anymore. And, and I'm trying to concentrate on my health, just doing regular stuff. Got my bicycles. I bought an e-bike for days that I don't want to like get an intense workout on, but still want to be outside doing shit so that I'm not on the internet. The gym is still like a pretty constant thing, even though I'm old now and it takes a lot longer to recover because somehow I woke up and I'm 42. The only other thing I can think of of merit that has taken place is that I actually reconciled with my father, uh, which I have not seen in like 25 years almost, which is kind of crazy. And the weeks leading up to that were real stressful. Parents got divorced when I was young. It was not an easy divorce. I was a kid. A lot of stuff got boxed up and compartmentalized. Seeing him was, I was real stressed out about what it meant and what it was going to be. And then he actually apologized to me. And I think in my mind, it's the first time that I got like a real no nonsense apology. And we just decided to move forward. You know, we're not like the best friends because we've lost a bunch of years, but we're at least able to, to do shit. You know, we were able to go get some food. We actually went to the casino up in Blackhawk, which is funny. And, you know, we, I won some money on fucking roulette. Had the buffet, which was not good for the diet, but whatever. We at least communicate now, which all positive things. Uh, lots of growing. Just trying to be, you know, just trying to be a good person for my wife, my family, and my friends, and the shop. Yeah, that's, that's what it's been. So a nice little break from all of this. I don't know what the future looks like for videos. Like I'm not going to sit here and just like before pretend um, like I've got some grand plan of uh, this is what's going to go viral or this is good. This will get attention. This will get them. I'm not really looking for that. It's just cathartic and a nice, uh, again, like steam release. Pretty much it, you know, and make art. I've been making a ton of art. This, this year I set out to make 108 paintings at the beginning of the year. I've completely lost count but i'm probably close to on track you know there when people want tattoos it's fantastic you know i still have people who fly in from all over the country to get tattooed by me and most of those people know me from the the boost god days so i appreciate everyone who rocks with me has been rocking with me this whole time i still have people hit me up all, like weekly being like when when are the vlogs coming back when is there gonna be another podcast are you gonna drop merch again you know the love is felt really crazy when you think about it. Uh, I did stop merch. I, I've, I've completely stopped. I do have mystery bags still up for hoodies online because it was hot outside, but it's about to be cold. So if you want mystery bags, they're up there and they're pretty cheap. Like you can even see behind me the stock that's left. And I'm not saying I'll never drop stuff again, but it can't be my full-time thing. Like I just can't do it. It's, it's way too stressful. Well, I ended friends and family, gave friends and family a severance t-shirt. Yeah kind of cleared it. So from now on, when I drop things, if I drop things, when I drop things, uh, it'll be a pre-order for the entire world. And then it'll just come out like in a normal way. There'll be no more like two tiered system, which was basically my life for many years. And it was great while it lasted, but everything changed. You know, the pandemic really changed pretty much everything on this planet for us. You know, you gotta, you gotta roll with the punches and not try to just complain about how much shit has changed. Just a different, a different world, a different life. That's, that's how we're living. Right now, I gotta take Kirby to the vet. So that's what I'm gonna do. I don't even know where this fool's leech is. You and I, come on. Go. We'll be back. I know Omar. It's very upsetting. Hold on. Let's get to this. Here, you get that. Kirby, come here. Kirby. There you go. Let's go get the shots. Come on. Come on. It's fine. We're going out. Come on. Why are you acting like this? Come on. Kerbals. Let's do it, man. We gotta go. Alright, let me put your bed in the car and I'm gonna come back and get you. We got Kirby's camo bed. So we can ride in style. Being goofy. It's no big deal, man. Yeah, it's silly. Yeah, we're here. We're here. Oh, you big fatty. Yeah, you know where we're at now. A few minutes ago, big deal. Now, not so. Hello. Hey. How's it going? I see 
Sure. Okay, cool. No problem. That was ridiculous. Yeah, you were acting ridiculous just then. Come here. Come here. Hey, chill out. Chill out. Come here. There you go. Yeah, sneakers. Dirty sneakers. Alright, all done, son. You were ridiculous in there. Yeah, you were quite ridiculous in there. No real reason. Yeah. Alright, we're all home. Those drool you got on my car. Oh, it's the garage door. What are we gonna do? No, come on. You're so ridiculous about the garage. Come here, I'll take this off. It'll make life easier. You want to be such a... No, now we're not scared of this day. We were scared a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, Omar. You're going tomorrow. Good Lord. Jesus. So, yeah, the stair chair, since we're here. The stair chair, which my mother-in-law needed. You could buy a nice used car for how much this cost. Because of that curve and that curve. Hey, relax. Because of those curves, it's somehow worthless. I don't understand. You'd think they'd buy it back and, like, reprogram it. No. You have to pay them to come get it. There's been a lot of ridiculous things that have happened in the last couple of years, and that is definitely one of them. All right, go outside. All right, so today is a Wednesday. I uh, normally am not at the shop on Wednesdays, but I'm uh, going down there for a little bit. But right now, I'm gonna make some food. How's it going with you? Oh, we got spaghetti. Oh yeah, I'm getting that energy in me. Not in a bag. Today. Yeah. Did you get your drawing done? Yeah, it was way better. I went and looked at that spot on Pearl Street. On Pearl, next to Iris Piercing, basically. And what is it? A, a new building. Oh. But it's really expensive. How much is that? Fifty-five hundred dollars. Seems like it might not be worth it. Thinking like it'd be worth it with foot traffic because there's so many people out there but it also kind of relies on like impulse tattoos you know what I mean I don't feel like a lot of people just walk by and are like you know what today's the day and I'm gonna get a tattoo there'd be a lot more people coming in but I think we'd all just go crazy just answering the same question over and over and over and over and over again there's like a couple of buildings down there but they're I mean they're all really pricey it made this place seem cheap I was like shit this place is cheap as fuck <laughs> 